Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today is build day, and today we are building a Mode 65. Um, I previously built a polycarbonate Mode 65. It's a GMK Modo Light, white back piece. Oh my god, and the brass mirror bottom plate, which is quite the look. Um, and, <laughs> okay, story time. S two story times. I ordered this second one not long after I got that one. Um, there are two things I want to accomplish, three things, two directly with the keyboard that I want to accomplish with this board. Um, first being is I really want an E-White 65, especially now that I have the Milk Thermal. Um, it's just a very, very handsome look. Uh, and then the other thing is I wanted to do a half plate build. So in my uh, Mode 80 2020 pre-release review, um, I mentioned I have another half plate build coming. This is the one. So I've got a carbon fiber uh, half plate to go with this. So wanted to white, wanted to do half plate. So I got a, a second one of these guys. I, I guess really there's three things with the keyboard. I also wanted a lighter one, which is actually, oh my God, I have this handy because that's gonna become this one. I'm gonna take the mirror brass butt off of this one and put it onto this one. And then in here I've got a black aluminum base I'm gonna put onto, oh, that's Destin from Smarter Every Day. That's my off-screen entertainment uh, while I'm shooting this one. That was funny. Um, <clears throat> so this will become a much lighter board with an aluminum bottom and a polycarbonate top. Um, and then I actually think also, I recently got GMK Minimal 2. So I think that would look really handsome on this with the black back piece, because I got the black artisan off of Mech Market as well. Um, so I'm gonna end up with a very light Mode 65 um, and a heavier Mode 65. And I think a, a more uh, e evenly distributed amount of weight in this one. Uh, the, the polycarbonate one is very, very, very bottom heavy. Um, I'll be building it in split backspace as well, um, because these hotter PCB allows for that. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to accomplish is when I first got into this hobby, uh, the GMK Apollo group buy was running. I am a huge fan of NASA's Apollo program that ran in the 60s and 70s. Um, and so when I learned about these keycaps, I was like, oh my god, I have to have them. Uh, unfortunately, the group buy had ended, but Daily Clack had pre-orders open still, so my first ever GMK group buy it came from Australia, which, fine, cool, whatever, it's here, I don't care. Um, I got the base kit and the novelties kit, which is fantastic. Um, I used this on a previous build that I never released because I wasn't happy with it, which was a KBD 75 V2. Um, not my best switch lubing job. That's a really stiff, really quiet keyboard. I bought that keyboard um, a long time ago and planned to do the NASA themed build with it. And it looked great. I may include pictures here. I think I've got some photos of it. Um, but the feel and sound of the keyboard just wasn't what I wanted anymore. So I took the caps off, really never used it. Um, and I think these will look fantastic on the white mode 65. In fact, I know they will because someone in the Octix Discord, Octix is the designer of this set as well as GMK Polybius, um, posted a picture of an E-White 65. I'm not sure if it was a mode, um, but a, a white 65 with this on it, and it looked absolutely fantastic. Um, now, because I got into this GMK group by during pre-orders, um, I missed out on artisan caps. That was before I cared about artisan caps. I was really unaware. That being said, I totally, totally was fortunate and found someone on Mech Market selling one for not heinously over um, MSRP for it. So I got the Rama, I got the keycap set, it's all Apollo themed. I'm very into it. Um, between ordering my polycarbonate and E-White uh, 65, I also got the blue-gray back piece, um, which I think will match the blue-gray of the keycaps very well, so that'll look fantastic. I, I think we've got just a really good build planned here um, that I'm very excited about. I Again, I love the way the KVD 75 looked with Apollo on it. Um, I just know I could do better on the actual board itself. So, a lot rolling into one <laughs> here. Um, additionally, you will also notice this is the first time I'm shooting with a second camera angle. Hi, camera two, what up? It's me, ya boy. Um, I've wanted to add a second camera for a long time, not necessarily always at this angle, um, 
but there, I, I want to do some videos that require some very close up shots. Um, so I want to have the top down for kind of the contextual shots and then camera two for the detail shots. So I'm just trying it out today. It, it's really not probably going to add a lot to this video, um, but it's there regardless, which is great. It's uh, an A6600 as well instead of an A6400. So I get an in body image stabilization. Um, which now meetups are a thing again and all that. I kind of like that feature because I have shaky hands. So um, that was a lot of preamble. Without further ado, let's let's unbox this uh, bad boy here. I've already opened it once to make sure all my parts are here and all that. Really just the 65 packaging is awesome. Big fan. Much lighter components box this time because I have less extras this time. Learned from last time. I'm just going to unbox all these and just get this box out of here. It's amazing how doing something the second time you're able to do it better. Should be a saying about that. Oh, okay. I've already pretty much told you what's in all these, but may as well give you a visual walkthrough because I need to unpack these anyway. So, got our mode branded screwdriver, which is great. Love that our bits and case screws, our feet, our daughter board, our plate caps. Um, with this board, I ordered the uh, rainbow. I'm gonna open it, I'm not sure I'm gonna, about to explain something. I was used to explaining concepts in like an audio way that I was forgetting to show things on video. I got the rainbow titanium back piece. I don't have specific plans for this, um, I just, I really wanted it and I ordered this around when they announced the 65 was going off sale, at least for now. Um, and so I don't really have any specific plans for that, but we might look at it on uh, one of the two boards today. I think the colors could look kind of nice with Moto on the uh, Polycarp. But. So that was the actual one I ordered with this. It's funny, I ordered this whole 65 kit knowing that the pieces were kind of going to get scattered to the wind. Um, so yeah, that's the way she goes. I actually have not looked at this part yet. This is our half plate. I went for carbon fiber. I figured I want my mods to be pretty stiff, but then get to enjoy the flex of the alphas. So, man, polycarbonate, or not polycarbonate, uh, carb well, polycarbonate too, but carbon fiber is just a fantastic looking material. That kind of sheeny. See, I'm already not using the second camera because I kind of forgot it's there. Here, let's, let's give the second camera some love. You like that? Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to change my lighting if that's the angle I stick with. Because the lighting is def definitely optimized for, for top down. Um, so that'll be our plate today. I may as well leave that more or less out. Won't be too long till we need it again. Our solder PCB. Like I said, a much less busy uh, accessories box this time. The first time, the first time I ordered, I ordered a number of extras which is one of my favorite parts about the 65 is all of those sweet, sweet options. Uh, E-white top, there you go. Uh, bought the whole thing later, obviously. Just trying to kind of blaze through these. And then the black bottom, lovely finish. There's plastic wrap on it right now. It's not actually that shiny, um, which will end up again going on the polycarbonate one when we get there, but that's what we got. <clears throat> Parts baggies off to the side here. Gonna need that to test the PCB. Oh, and internals. Um, we are using, as is pretty typical around here, uh, Duroc V2 stabilizers lubed with Crytox 205 grade zero on the plastic on plastic interfaces and Crytox XHT BDZ on the wires. There you go. Oh my goodness, there you go. Let me just throw stuff everywhere with sticky XHTBD's head on it. My goodness. So, stabs. Uh, only two to you stabs because it's only a left shift and return that need them when you're doing split backspace. So, there you go. And then for switches, we're using a switch I have not actually given a, a whole uh, use. Uh, I, that sentence made no sense, Ian. Uh, a switch I haven't used in a full board before. Um, which, like, Ian, this is a solder build. Why would you do that? Well, I have one of those soldering guns, so if this is a catastrophe, I can fix it pretty easily. But, more specifically, because this is a half-plate build, the sound of the switch 
is really quite important to the characteristic of the board, and the Gateron Oil Kings are a very switch... <sighs> they have a very housing heavy profile if that makes sense. They aren't like long pull, you know, there's there's not like a really specific bottom out sound, but you, you really hear the housing of this switch during use, which I think, I think, will complement the half plate build well. The only half plate build I've done before this was again, the Mode 2022 review unit, which I didn't get to keep. Um, and that, that sounded like I'm mad I didn't get to keep it. I knew I didn't get to keep it, but I'll, I'm, I'm saying I didn't get to experience it for, for very long. Um, so I'll get more experience with half plates now which is cool. I was actually at a meetup earlier today. I went to the Sheru Designs uh, meetup out in Milpitas, um, not far from where I live here in Cupertino. Um, and I got to try some really awesome plateless and half plate um, builds today, which was very cool. I also got to meet Tiny, the artisan maker, which was really, really cool. Um, I had no idea um, she was local to Bay Area. We talked about commenting on TikTok and making puns, and then I bought some pins, so. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Uh, and the meetup in general was just a blast, too. This was actually a two-day one. I went to day one today. Uh, day two is tomorrow. As of filming, it is April 23rd uh, right now. Um, so, yeah, day one was awesome. The Sheru Designs crew was absolutely fantastic. Um, the vlog for that will come out before or after this. I'll link to it um, once it exists, either way. So you can check that out with a lot of very, very cool keyboards on display. I went to the Palo Alto Coffee and Keebs last month, and it's funny, it was very vintage heavy. Um, these, this, this one was all very modern, very what I would call premium boards. Oh, that wasn't in an ESD bag. Isn't that interesting? What if I figured out they didn't... Were my other ones in ESD bags? Am I going crazy? Is mode gaslighting me? I have no idea. Um, anyway, that's interesting. That, that wasn't in an ESD bag. I trust Mo's judgment. Um, where was I? Yes, Coffee and Keys in Palo Alto was very uh, vintage heavy. This was very premium boards heavy, very few budget builds, some very good ones. Um, but the average, uh, <laughs> what did someone say I was talking to? The, the average price of these keyboards uh, was, if you averaged every board in the room, was pretty, pretty ridiculous. Um, but got to see some, some cool stuff. So I just want to appreciate this. I haven't shown the solder PCB. Yeah, I just want to appreciate this. Design real quick. Yeah, there we go. Looks so good. I love the 65 PCB with the little cutouts for the mounting points. The silk screen in the web there, which because we're doing a half plate, we'll actually be able to see this um, when it is uh, built before it has caps on. I think that's a pretty cool look that you can kind of, your, your brain kind of fills in the missing information of what the switch is covered. Very beautiful PCB. And designed by friend of the channel, Nando Lindrum. Check out my interview with him if you haven't. It turned out really well. And got featured in kbd.news, uh, the weekly um, keyboard newsletter, which was super cool. I, I woke up and someone had messaged me on Discord and just sent me the link to the... Uh, the newsletter and I was like, oh, okay, maybe there's something they want me to check out. And I scrolled down to the bottom and there was, there was Gondo's face from our interview. That was pretty cool. It's been a pretty cool couple weeks, all said. Meetups and getting the interview with Gondo and a lot of uh, mail coming in recently, you know, getting the, uh, the, the second camera here that, that arrived and yeah, it's been good stuff lately. That doesn't feel like it's completely seated. Am I losing my mind? Four holes. Four pins. Well, I guess let's see. Let me uh, boot up via here. Okay. Happy Healthy PCB. This uh, Smarter Everyday video I got playing off screen is really interesting. He's touring the Kodak Film Factory. It's pretty cool. Right. Now it wants us to prep the case first. I'm gonna stick to the PCB. I, I'm, I've built this keyboard before. I'm still just referencing the build guide to make sure I don't miss something stupid. Um, I'm gonna install the stabilizers first. It wants me to have like the bottom case ready and everything, um, but that is not the way I'm going to do things today. 
these holes same way. Oh, is this the back? That's the back. Y'all didn't see that. <laughs> oh boy. Um, as with all uh, screw in, snap in stabilizers, the wire side goes into the big hole, the attachment side goes into the small hole, whether that's clip in or screw in. Um, you'll hear them kind of nestle into, into place there. Are we the baddies? There we go. I was doing something wrong. I was putting it into the wrong location. The uh, return area on uh, the Mode 65 PCB is quite busy with like the ISO uh, enter options and, and all that good stuff. Parts tray here. Phillips head. All right, I'm going to screw these in and give these a test and I'll be right back with you. Alrighty, stabs are in. They sound good, which is encouraging information because I'm soldering this one together. <laughs> uh, fortunately, the Oil King seem to have a nice firm grip on the PCB, so that'll make soldering this together much easier. Uh, some switches, uh, never when you got to do five pin switches, which these are. So you see the little black legs there on the bottoms. On some switches, those are just small enough compared to the holes in the PCB that they're really floppy. Uh, these have a very nice positive uh, grab to them, which is pretty good news. You love to see it. So, half plate. This is exciting. This is very cool. I like trying new stuff, layouts, building styles. I like having new experiences. Um, we are going to number one refer to the build guide and make sure we're doing everything right here. Yes, indeed, we are. Um, and we are going to, as always, snap a switch into the top corner, snap a switch into the opposing corner. That is going to lock our plate in the correct orientation. You'll love to see it. We're gonna make sure we're pressing all the way down on these guys. I already love the way that looks. That looks absolutely stunning. Big fan. There. And I have plate forks. Now, what do you, oh. now what do plate forks do? Uh, plate forks go under the plate, uh, and these little tines go exactly between the switches, so that when you're pressing in switches, the plate doesn't fall down. It, it kind of takes up the gap. Um, and then once you have enough switches in, um, it'll kind of all hold itself together, which is great. Um, so I am going to snap in switches and see you on the other side of that process. Obviously with a half plate, you're only snapping in the pieces around the edge, kind of like doing a puzzle, if you will. Um, and then the middle ones are all just flying free. So <laughs> gonna be a, a little bit different. See you on the other side. I think that is a quite handsome looking PCB there. You can just see the mode lettering through the, uh, the grid of, of keys. I think that looks awesome. All black, everything. All right, um, next up is soldering. Soldering is not interesting. I don't like moving cameras, so I'm not gonna show you soldering. Um, it is uh, a very, very straightforward process. I would say Black Simon probably is one of the best tutorials out there. Basically each of those little pairs of pins there, I'm gonna hit it with a soldering iron, a little bit of solder, lock it in place and make the electrical connection. And then we'll be uh, back at it on the other side. And then it, um, I think it's assembly time. Then really, I don't think there's, um, 
yeah, I don't think there's much more after that. We're, we're, we're rocking over on into assembly. So I will, uh, I'll just cut this time. And uh, next time you see this uh, PCB plate combo here, uh, the whole backside will be covered in solder joints. Just like that. And there's a uh, soldered PCB. I tested it once again. All of our solder connections are functional and look pretty good, in my opinion. One of my better solder jobs, probably. Um, yeah, I just want to get very handsome. A lot of texture in this setup that I like. Carbon fiber is a very cool material, and the black switches look awesome with the black stabs and everything. Very nice. Uh, next up is assembly, which means I think probably what we're going to do is doing some switcheroos uh, with some parts. Uh, I need the bottom. So, we're going to start with prepping this one by putting, god this one just weighs nothing compared to the, uh, the brass, and now I've said that out loud so I need to grab the scale. Okay. I do this to myself. Really? Oh, I might finally cabinet back into place. I do this to myself. This is all on me. Is my scale disgusting for measuring food? No, it's not. Okay. Alright, we got the scale. We'll measure the difference between the two uh, bottoms here, aluminum and brass. We're doing some prep work, so let's get a little more space here. Um, we need to put some feet. Plastic here. Don't want to scuff our bottom by sitting it down without feet. That's no good. There we go. Uh, no, that's garbage. What are you doing, Ian? My garbage can is full. All right. Uh, daughter board. I need that. We need feet. Second one down. How about that? So this is technically what step two is. But again, I was prepping the uh, PCB first to keep the flow of the video better. Okay. plastic out of here. The uh, embossed mode logo looks very cool on the uh, black on black. It's a nice look. Okay, let's screw the uh, daughter board into this one. Uh, plate caps we can set aside. I'm not going to use plate caps. That's the daughter board bag. Okay, so we can set all those aside for now. Daughter board. If I recall correctly, our socket cap screws are the ones that hold down the daughter board. There's one, two, three, four, five of those. Yep, so that logic follows. Use the 1.5 millimeter hex. Line up our daughter board here. Get it just finger tights with a little bit of wiggle room to get all the other screws in nicely. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it forward so the USB-C port is as far forward as it can be. Make sure it's not sitting, you know, sub flush. We're talking like sub millimeter distances here, but paint both sides of the fence. Go. Um. Yeah, I think putting this onto the uh, polycarbonate one is the next move. Oh, let's.
let's do weigh in. Four hundred and twenty-three grams. Not sure that's showing on camera, but four hundred and twenty-three grams. Goodness gracious, so shiny. Get the weight back piece out of the way. Yeah, I want this facing it. This way. Yes. There we go. This is also one point five drive size. Where's the one point three? It's the one point three. One point three drive size. There we go. I recently rebuilt this with a palm plate and epsilon switches, and I'm quite liking both. The palm plate has a fun kind of poppy sound almost to it. It's quite deep still, so poppy doesn't feel quite like the right word, but it's a very lively sounding plate. see the orange backs of the uh, Epsilon switches there. It's funny, whenever I move, I can just hear the lens on the B camera ticking as it autofocuses because it's a uh, macro lens. Uh, so it's not technically for shooting video, but YOLO. Um, and every, every time I like move a little closer, a little further from it, I can hear it ticking. <laughs> as the uh, focus motor goes to work. Okay, that's great. Being gentle with the polycarbonate, there are metal threaded inserts in the polycarb top, but better safe than sorry with these. Yeah, just make sure we're on a bit of even tension here. Yeah, that feels pretty good. That feels pretty good. Of the piano. Cool. Snap back on that black piece. Ooh, that white on black contrast is nice. I like that. Oh man. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I wanted a lighter 65, so there's one of our objectives uh, completed. And that, that's a pretty handsome little bit of materials in those corners there. Nice sheen off the black back piece. That's very nice. And weighs just absolutely nothing. Not sure it sounds any different, so that's interesting. But there you go. Um, so now we can weigh the brass back. I'm gonna fold this up to buffer between the brass and the scale. Try to put it on the scale before I turn it on the scale. All right, so we're 423 grams on the other one. 1,317 grams. So quick back to the napkin math, that's three times heavier <laughs> on this one. That sounds about right. Sounds about right. Looking at all those fingerprints, getting a little polish in here. I really do like the mirror bottom. It is just heinously heavy, but man, does it look good. Done with the scale for now, I think. <laughs> all right, uh, prepare bottom case. All right, so now it, next up, it wants me to attach this to the top case. Um, I think I'm actually gonna put my caps on first, so that way the uh, PCB is as supported as possible when putting all that pressure on the uh, on the plate. And PCB, the whole, you know, internals, I should say. Um, so, let me scooch that to the front of the door. Front of the workbench, right? that open, that's just in frame, that's excellent. There we go, cool. I'm going to time lapse and or cut through this and I'll be right back with you.
Okay, now we got some choices to make um, because we're at the novelties point. Let me pull up the uh, kidding here so I can remember what rows, what novelties are because we're gonna be putting a lot of them on the nav column, I guess you'd call it on a 65. Uh, the tricky thing is the artisan has the same design as one of the novelties, which goes in the top row. And I don't like doubling up those symbols. So I was thinking you put it on escape kind of as is tradition, but I think what I'm gonna do instead, add a little bit more balance to the board, is put that on what I would have as my home key gonna use the white moon escape that gets us white keys uh, come on buddy that gets us white keys across the board from each other we're not duplicating this which is good um, oh no but r2 is is yeah okay th never mind this this was the problem I was remembering so we're at we're Never mind, scrap it. <laughs> Disregard what I said. Go back in time. Rewind, Ian. If I can figure out how to edit in a cool rewind, there I will. Um, psych. What we're going to do is we're going to do that there. Our artisan. Um, we're going to do this. The top row. The only artisan, or artisan, uh, novelty, rather, for R2 is... The space helmet, unfortunately. So we will be doubling up, but that's the way it goes. Uh, let me make sure that that is correct. Profile, I guess it is. Uh, R3, we have got the, this is the CSM, the command and service module from the Apollo program. The command module is the pointy little part on top. The service module is everything from the cylinder down to the uh, tip of that engine bell. There, so the command and service module. And that ends up next to the Saturn V. That feels thematically appropriate. <clears throat> and then for R4, we got the lander. It's funny, this is actually much more reminiscent of the planned Soviet lunar lander. Um, it does actually kind of look like one of the prototypes of the American lander, now that I look at it. But it looks a lot more like the uh, Soviet design than the American design. But that's okay, I won't tell anyone. Uh, and then on the command keys, we've got the lunar rovering. Uh, lunar, lunar Roving Vehicle, LRV, uh, which is the uh, basically golf cart <laughs> they drove around in on the moon. Uh, first ever electric car on the moon, so take that, Elon. Um, there are keycaps. All right, we, we're doubling up the symbols. I don't love that. Um, GMK Apollo, looking at it compared to like current kidding, um, has some, some holes in terms of like novelty kidding and, and that kind of thing. But it was also an early 2020 set, so a lot of stuff has changed between now and then. It is no fault of optics um, that the, the kidding is a little funky in terms of novelty placements and, and, and that kind of thing. But it is a absolutely beautiful set. I, I love this blue gray, I think the blue gray back piece. Ooh. Dang. Um, I think the blue gray back piece is going to serve this very well. So. That is excellent. Now, we do need the top case. Oh boy, I just hit the B camera with my chair. So sorry. Are we still... More or less framed up. Let's move it back. All right, we're gonna call that good. That's an experiment, this video anyway. Uh, so this is our top piece. Which is the aluminum white top piece. I'm going to grab the microfiber cloth since we're putting aesthetic pieces face down on a kind of hard work mat. Just don't scuff anything. Um, mounting. I'm going to start this as non-isolated top mounts. That's screwing the plate just directly into the top. Um, I think for the sound tests on this one, I'm going to compare um, the top and the ISO top, but I saw a YouTube video recently, I forget who, but I'll definitely leave the link, where they got these O-rings, they left specifications in the video description, and they uh, actually like true burger mounted this board, um, and said they quite liked it. So the it, it's funny, the plate caps that come with the board put a layer of rubber 
between the screw and the PCB, or the plate, and the plate in the top case, which is effectively what burger mounting is, but these are very squishy compared to these. Uh, and, and they said these worked quite well. Um, again, I'll, I'll leave the link below, I'll find it for this. So I think we'll probably have three sound tests for this video, comparing all three of those mounting styles. There's no point in doing stack mount uh, on this, it completely defeats the purpose of the half plate, so I'll, I'll skip that one. Uh, but that means it is time to bring back our screws. I think I've already got the right bit on here. I think these use the smaller bit. Nope, they don't. God, every time. <laughs> they use the bigger bit. Yes, they do. How about that? All right, so I'm just going to drop these all in place first because they are very tiny. Itty bitty little screws. feeding them all into place here because as I screw this in, the plate will sink down into the top case, relatively speaking. Uh, it makes it harder to drop those in. I am excited to try carbon fiber as a half plate material. I think it'll make the mods in the number row nice and stiff, but give all a nice bounce to the alphas. The only other time I've used a carbon fiber plate was actually in my mode 80 2020. Um, I believe that's one of the sound tests in my review video on that. Yeah, it was aluminum FR4 and carbon fiber. Um, and I quite like the way it sounded. Um, I'm excited to hear it in this configuration. I have very little experience with carbon fiber as a uh, plate material. But there we go. Got all that good. Let me switch back to our uh, build guide tab here. Daughterboard, bottom case, and back plate. We are in the home stretch here, folks. Let me get this out of the way. We're done with that. Take a sip of my matcha latte. Ah, fantastic. Recently discovered matcha lattes as a thing in my life. Big fan. Why did I have this? I don't know why I had this out. Oh, testing stabilizers, probably. And stabilizers, is that my head? Yeah, whatever. Losing my mind. It's also almost nine o'clock and I went to a meetup today, so my brain is tired, but we are in the home stretch. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna full send here. I'm just gonna embrace the fact that I've touched this. I'm not gonna baby it, let's clean it. JST connected. Slotting in the front edge bottom case. Slot in on the right side. Here we go. Oh, oh, still not quite. What's up, buddy? Where are you going to be? Here we go. I'm sure that didn't want to settle into place right away. It's also a brand new top case, so there might have been some a little bit of spare thickness from the E coat. The lovely white finish. I uh, highly recommend this Kodak factory tour video on Smarter Every Day. It's very interesting. I had no idea the process that goes into. And part one of three here is almost an hour long, and it's just making the backing of the film. It's a three part series, and it is already. Very interesting. Oh yeah, I think I put a little scratch on the back of this. I keep forgetting that when I go to try to wipe it off. When I got my first fillings as a kid, they weren't white yet. They were still metallic colored. And one morning I was brushing my teeth and I thought it was a piece of Pop-Tart and I brushed my filling for like, no, I felt like an eternity as a kid. And my mom came in and asked what I was doing. And so I was trying to get something out of my teeth and she <laughs> told me it was a filling. <laughs> The back of this keyboard is like my teeth. That's the moral of that story. That doesn't make any sense, Ian. All right, blue-gray back piece. I'm gonna snap on the back piece while it's still upside down. And then we are going to flip it over and have the big reveal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That is gonna be a wonderful match for this keycap set. That's gonna be just excellent. Nice. All right. <sighs> Drum roll. Just kidding.
game. I can edit in a drum roll. Why do I do these things to future Ian? Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. That matches absolutely fantastically. I love that very much. That is awesome. Let's give the uh, B camera a little bit of love here. Getting used to positioning things so we can see them. That is nice. We'll go back to the top camera here. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, this has now done the Apollo keycaps justice. Big fan of that. All right, um, because we can, we're gonna try the other back pieces out too. Because we are all ready here. This is the black one. I also think this will look pretty handsome. Yes. Yep, it clashes just a little bit with the Artisan, but if you didn't have the Artisan here and had like the white escape, I think that would look quite cool. The white and black looks great though, so with the right keycaps set, that little bit of contrast there. It's very cool, I like that. These back pieces were such a good idea. The, uh, the mode Sonnet, they're 75, that it goes on sale. Uh, six days from now, recording this video. This video I'm sure will be out after the Sonnet's on sale because I'm a slow editor. Um, has the top accent piece, which I feel like is kind of the spiritual continuation of uh, these back pieces. Let me grab the white one off the polycarbonate here. So we're doing a little white on white action. That's very clean. I don't love having the same color with kind of the unnecessary seam in it, but that is a very clean look. If you like E-white, big fan of that. I feel like maybe a, a mirror back plate, kind of, you know, a colorless back plate, if you will. Uh, might uh, be a better choice there. Uh, and then last but not least, we're gonna break out this titanium one. I'm sure this is gonna make no aesthetic sense <laughs> with uh, this keycap set, but I just wanna see what it looks like. Jeez, my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. What's really cool is actually the backside of it because of the different depths. It got very different amounts of chemical or heat treatment. I'm not actually sure how this is done. I think it might be heat treatment. And then there's kind of this really cool gradient across the back of mine. Each one of these is unique, which I think is pretty cool. Um, no two of these come out exactly the, uh, the same. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I mean, it looks awesome. It makes, as I suspected, no sense with this keycap set whatsoever, but that does look undeniably cool. Uh, GMK Chaos Theory, I think will look quite good with this, which is what I've got in the pipeline. Uh, Dracula has quite a color palette to it, so that might look pretty good. Honestly, a more basic keycap set, like white on black, black on white, minimal, um, modern Dolce or modern Dolce Light without the color accents. Um, I think it'll be quite handsome with this. You know, let let this be the attention piece of the keyboard, whereas this one, my current build, the keycap set is very clearly the attention piece of the board. Um, that's awesome. Titanium's also a cool material. They're doing multicolor again. Um, both an internal multicolor weight and a multicolor uh, top accent piece on the Sonnet. Um, but it's actually a, it's a different finish this time. I'm already on the mode site. Let me just pull it up here. They're doing it differently this time. Um, I think they're kind of honing in their materials and processes that work well for them. Multicolor, uh, PVD coated stainless steel. So it's not titanium and it's a chemical, um, physical vapor dep deposition process this time. This is very cool. A lot of stainless steel options on the uh, on the mode Sonnet. So that's gonna be pretty cool. But look at that. How about that, everyone? There will be uh, sound tests attached for you to enjoy. I am a very happy boy. I've now finally done justice to my Apollo keycaps. I bought all that time ago when I first started in this uh, this hobby. Got to try out the second camera today. I've got a 65 with split back now. And I've also achieved my goal of having a almost comically lightweight uh, 65. Oh, I'm zooming a little too far now. There we go. Um, don't talk to me or my son ever again vibes. Uh, I now have a very light <laughs> um, 65. And it, ooh. All right, well, obviously there's gonna be enough, you know, sound test after this. 
I like that. And this... The flex on the alphas is much less minimal than it was on the uh, on the 80, I think, because there's the screw mounting point right under the space bar. And just tapping on it now, it's, it's very firm, which is what I didn't like about the uh, mode 80 2022 in top mount is that the space bar was super flexy I'm not sure if this is because there's a mounting point or because of the carbon fiber plate or both But I'm willing to bet it's the mounting point. Well, it, it, it certainly is both but I think it's more because of the mounting point. I Really like the way these mods Feel I'm not wild about how the numro Sounds I hear a lot of the case which the YouTube video about this o-ring uh, mount mod um, one of the specific things they call it is you hear less of the case. Um, so that might be exactly what the doctor ordered on this. We will find out in the sound test. You will find out momentarily. I'll find out in probably a week or two, knowing my schedule these days. Um, but, uh, there you go. Let's, let's zoom out just a little bit more. There we go. All right, gang. Uh, like this video if you did. Leave me a comment if you have a question or feedback. I'm always looking to improve and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.